faithful. Our God is wonderful. Our God is awesome. We want to welcome each and every one of us to church this morning. I want to believe that you had a very great time, you know, uh, over the night. The Lord is good all the time. This morning, we are going to be praying, and I'd like you to just continue to lift up your hands and just worship the Lord. Let's give God all the praise. Let's magnify him. Our God is faithful. Our God is loving. Our God is awesome. Let's glorify him. Let's exalt his holy name. Daddy, Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity you have given unto us, O God, to see this blessed day. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, for our Father, for our family members. Thank you, Father, for our church family. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you, Father, for strengthening us. We exalt you. 
we lift you high, Father. Blessed be your name forever and ever. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. As we pray before you this morning, we ask, Father, that our prayers will be acceptable before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 18. The Bible says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Let me quickly read from verse 17 so that you can get, you know, a better understanding of that scripture. The verse from verse 17, the Bible says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. What is that scripture saying? It does not matter what I'm going through right now. It does not matter what you are going through right now. It does not matter what is going on around us right now. It does not mind, matter the situation we have found ourselves. The Bible says joy is the key. You will lift up your voice after me this morning. And say, Father, in the midst of whatever I'm going through right now, in the midst of whatever we are going through right now, grant me, grant us to be joyful in the Lord. Let the joy of the Holy Holy Spirit, overwhelm my heart, overwhelm my spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help us to continue to rejoice in you. Do not allow anything to contaminate our joy, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the joy of the Lord continue to spring like, they were, like a well, of, like a well of, of rivers of life, in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant us to be full of joy in you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Me posi kabalinte. Reko sunga bri in the gate of Roma linge do sugara. Langre kesko prima yenge ruko to skete In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Zechariah chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 17. Zechariah chapter 3. And I'd like to read from... Verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Somebody say he is mighty. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. When the Lord has come to save us, he will be joyful over us. The Bible tells us that the Lord our God is a mighty God. He will save. We're going to lift up our voice after me and say, Father, this is him. Send forth your mighty hand of salvation. Save us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray? Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that this season send forth your mighty hand of salvation. The Bible says you are mighty in the midst of your children and you will save. And after you have saved us, O oh God, you will lead us in rejoicing. You will make our joy to be full. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father Lord, save us, save us, save us, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Isaiah 52 and verse 9. Isaiah 52 and verse 9. The Bible says, Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye west places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people 
He has redeemed solid rock feelings. Did I hear somebody shout hallelujah? I love this scripture. The Bible says, break forth into joy. Sing together. Ye waste places of Jerusalem. Another translation says, ye remnants of Jerusalem. In other words, in spite of what has happened to people, in spite of the dead around us, in spite of the influence of coronavirus around us, the Bible says, for the Lord has comforted his people. The Lord will comfort you. The Lord will comfort us in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, for he has redeemed Jerusalem. Jerusalem there is you and I. Jerusalem there is our loved ones. Jerusalem there is our church members, uh, church family. Jerusalem there is our world today. We're going to lift up our voices and say, Father Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we send comfort to every family that is wounded this season in the name of Jesus. Every family that has been affected which could by coronavirus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we send forth your comfort. Shall we begin to pray? We send forth your comfort. We send forth your redemption in the name of Jesus. Let's send forth comfort. Let's send forth redemption in the name of Jesus. We speak redemption into our nation. We speak redemption into our state. We speak redemption into the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Le prina tasun kapalinge regede ropa sanga di shete promazi ke lige do promaza lengre ke toskobo shanda regede te ropo posondori ke roba libre ke yende roba libre ke te lengre ke de roba zende ke de roba le prehete ke de promaza ke te regede du prege li roba zende ke de roba la bashenderia maleke ke toskobo promaza ke kutori prege di she ratoska fremali ke promazu te ke di she regede sende. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 95, verse 1. Psalm 95, from verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Everybody jump up on your feet in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are. I'd like you to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. We serve a great God. It is a season to shout a shout of victory. It is a season to shout a shout of joy. It is a season to shout a shout of victory over the devil. Somebody make a shout of victory. Verse 6 of the book of Psalms 98. And then this is the final prayer. Psalm 98 and verse 6. With trumpet and with sound of coming, connect, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. You will pray to God and say, Father, Lord, as this month of May is rounding up gradually, Lord, grant me to continue to be joyful. Grant my family to be joyful. Let the only noise that will be heard in solid rock finish be joyful noise. We will not hear the sound of sorrow. We will not hear the noise of, 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 of sorrow. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up our church into you, into your hands. We lift up our family members into your hands. Only the joy, the sound of joy shall be heard in our tabernacle. Sound of sorrow will not be heard in our tabernacle. In the name of Jesus, we shall shout for joy. We shall shout for joy. We shall not shout out for sorrow. We shall not shout to God Almighty for sadness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Wave your hands unto the Lord. Give the Lord praise. Glorify his holy name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And the people of God say amen. Amen. Now put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we please be upstanding as we take the aim for today? And if you want to go ahead and sit, that's fine. We're going to praise the Master King. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer oh somebody wanted you shout amen. amen well we got a few people here can you just shout amen, amen. hallelujah we are so excited that you tuned in with us this morning we are broadcasting live from solid rock phoenix right in the heart of glendale arizona and for those of you who do not know this place, you ought to stop scrolling and check us out. Hallelujah. The pastors are Ezekiel and Julio Joe, and we are so grateful for this opportunity. We give God praise for them leading us and guiding us during this season. Hallelujah. This morning, there is a word from the Lord, and it is titled, I Still Have Joy. Just type on the screen, wherever you are, just type, I still have joy. I know it may seem bleak. I know it may seem discouraging. But I want to encourage you this morning that we still have joy. Our scripture text is found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, starting with verse number 7. And then we'll move all the way through 9. It is a very familiar passage of scripture. And it reads, 2 Corinthians, chapter number 4, starting at verse number 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not 
of us. Verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet I speak. Sorry. We are troubled on every side, not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. I still have joy. Hallelujah. Can you just play a little bit for me so I can get, you know, start to flow in. Hallelujah. I still have joy. I want that to resound throughout your spirit. I still have joy. Lay over in the midnight hour. I still have joy. So many of us watching me today are going through one challenge or another. You may have been furloughed. You may have been laid off. You've lost your job. Can't pay your bills. One challenge after the next. And it may seem as if you have nothing to rejoice about. The schools have closed down. The weddings have been canceled. The vacations have been postponed. Our favorite restaurants are closed and we can't even get the kind of food that we want to eat. Graduation ceremonies have been halted and now we're online. Everybody's online everywhere. So much is happening all around us that if we are not careful during this season, we will find ourselves joyless. We will let external still our joy but when i was coming up we used to sing a song that said this joy that i have the world didn't give it to me and because the world didn't give it the world cannot take it away hallelujah i know it seems bleak but i want you to hold on because you still have joy as long as you have breath in your body there is an opportunity that you can be joyous in all circumstances. Hallelujah. Just right on the screen, I still have joy. Now, joy is defined by Rick Warren. He says, it is the settled assurance that God is in control of all of the details of my life. It is the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right, and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. Another definition says joy is choosing to respond to life's difficult situations with inner contentment and satisfaction. James 1 and, and 2 says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, how can I find joy when I'm falling into a temptation? I can find joy because of what I know. What I know about God, my experiences with God, gives me an assurance that my tomorrow is okay. I wish somebody would say amen. amen. Everything I know about God, my walk with God, is based on my reaction to my situation right now. Oh, I'm making my own self happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, Neither be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I'm weak, he makes me strong. So if you're feeling weak in your situation, just reach out for the joy of the Lord and you'll find strength in whatever situation you are going through right now in your life. Hallelujah. First Peter 1 and 8 says, though you, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not even see him now, you believe and trust him. And you greatly rejoice and delight with an inexpressible and glorious joy receiving as the result of your faith the salvation of your souls it's an inexpressible joy it is an incomparable joy it is an unexplainable joy when you got him down on the inside somebody say amen hallelujah 
So why do I have joy during this season in our lives when everything is topsy-turvy? I have joy because I have this treasure in this earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I can rest assured because I have the light of Christ shining through my heart. But ourselves, we are just a fragile jar of clay, but we contain a great treasure. I have hope because I know what I'm carrying. I have hope because the greater one lives down on the inside of me. It's precious. And those who don't have him, I beseech you this morning to receive him into your heart, into your mind, so that you can have power to walk during this season. I have joy because I have this treasure. Hallelujah. Just right on the screen, I have joy because I have the treasure of God shining through me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Number two, I still have joy because I am not distressed. <laughs> right on the screen, I am not distressed. Now, distress refers to the state of severe anxiety or strain or sorrow or pain. See, I, I see patients every day. They're so full of anxiety, so full of stress, so overwhelmed. So what, what they tend to do is start taking pills to cope with the anxiety but brothers and sisters, we don't have to pop a pill because we have the treasure that is shining through us that we still have joy in spite of our situation. Hallelujah. We are not distressed. No matter how bad it looks, we are not distressed. No matter how, how topsy-turvy everything may appear, we are not distressed. First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all of your care upon him for he careth for you that's all we have to do as believers when it gets overwhelming when it gets when you get perplexed cast all of your cares on him for he cares for you hallelujah so i'm not i'm, I'm i still have joy because i know the treasure is on the inside of me i still have joy because i am not distressed i still have joy Number three, because I am not forsaken. I have joy because I am not forsaken. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten about you. Sister Carol, I said God has not forgotten about you. Hallelujah. You are the apple of his eye. He knows every hair that is on your head. He will never abandon us. Sister Christiana, he will never give up on us. He will never let us go. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, He will never leave us nor forsake us. And I'm reminded of the prodigal son when he was out squandering all of his, his, his father's money. And he finally came to himself when he found himself in a gutter. He came to himself and he said, Let me go to my father's house. And then when he got to his father's house, the father looked out. And the father didn't say, who is that? No, he said, that's my son. He got excited. He said, that's my son. Go kill the fatty calf. We're getting ready to party because that's my son coming home. And that's how God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. When you come to yourself, he'll say, go kill the fatty calf. It's time to celebrate. Hallelujah. He didn't look at him in disgust. He didn't look at him in, in, in embarrassment. But he said, my son is coming home. Because no matter how it looks, God says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. In the middle of the pandemic, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. I wish I had somebody say amen right there. Hallelujah. I know, I know you don't know which way to turn. I know everywhere you look looks dim. It looks dark, but you are not forsaken. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, right there on the screen, I am not forsaken. I know we can't touch our neighbor, but we can write it on the screen. I am not forsaken. 
because he will never, ever, ever give up on us. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 says we are troubled on every side. This is our scripture foundational text. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I can rejoice because I know in whom I have believed. Some of us got the virus and we are still in the land of the living doing well. I still have joy. Some of my family members are sick in the hospital right now. Trust God because I still have joy. Believing that God is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I have joy because he has made me glad. Hallelujah. When Job was troubled, he cried, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Job still had joy. When David was troubled, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. David still had joy, no matter what's going on. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was troubled when they were facing a burning, fiery furnace, they said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us, but if not, <laughs> O oh, king, we will not serve your God. We will not serve your golden image. We know our God is able. They still had joy. Habakkuk 3 and 17 says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be in the vines, though the labor of the olive tree shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. So what about you? What about you? Can you find a reason to rejoice in the middle of this chaos? Can you find a reason to rejoice in the middle of this dark season? Can you find a reason to smile when everything looks dark? Hallelujah. So ponder on that question this week and find reasons to be joyful. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, For our light affliction is but for a moment. It worketh in us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Everything that we're going through right now is temporary. It's just a common. We're not going to stay here forever. All we have to do is keep our focus. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on the outcome. Because we know in whom we have believed. And he will not forsake us. We are not distressed. We are not cast down. But we still have joy. And this joy is unexplainable. It's supernatural. It's incomparable. We have joy when everybody's looking at us and they're wondering why we're still smiling. It's because we have this treasure in this earthen vessel so that we know that the power is not of us. The power belongs to God. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, God, for this word this morning. We ask that it would take root down on every viewer those that are watching live, those that will watch the replay, those will watch at some point throughout the day. Father, restore the joy in every home. Restore the joy in every marriage. Restore the joy in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. And we will forever give you the praise. We will forever give you the honor. And we will forever give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
Amen. Somebody shout amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have known the Father's care for me. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Oh, true He's always there for me. He's been good to me. I have known. I have known the Father's care for me. He's been good. He's been. through your daughter. Thank you for the session of prayer and everything that you did. As we begin to round up this service, thank you because your grace will not be rounded off in our lives. In the name of Jesus, as we enter the very last week of the month of May, our month of great grace, grace will not depart from our tabernacle. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. It's time for us to return our tithes and to give our offerings. We want to thank God for all the people that God has been using through this season to be a blessing to the mission and to the work of the ministry in this parish. Our prayer for you is that you will never lack in the name of Jesus. For those that are returning their tithes and giving their offering, you can log into solidrockfinish.org and go straight to give and uh, give through your portal if you are registered. And if you have not registered, it might be a good time to register. For those that want to give through Zelle, solid rock at, uh, pay at Solid Rock Finish. And for those that want to come to the church, you can come, drop your offering or mail it, and we'll be glad to receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. As we take the following announcement. By the grace of God, we are going to have our communion service on Wednesday. The communion service will be administered from this place. I want to encourage each head of household to administer at the various locations. We have churches in every home now. So, the head of the family will get the bread and the wine and administer for the family. And I will coordinate from the church in the name of Jesus. Time for that service is at 6.30 p.m. on YouTube on Wednesday in the name of Jesus. We shall continue to have our Sunday school on Zoom as we had this morning. It's going to be from 9.45 a.m. to 10.25 a.m. The meeting information is on, is on our church website, solidrockfinish.org. Thank you as you log in, in Jesus' name. Don't forget our regular Sunday worship service still begins at 10.30 a.m. and runs for one hour to 11.30 a.m. Then King's Collection service begins at 11.50 a.m. And it runs for 15, 20 minutes. Please encourage your children to be part of this service. By the grace of God, this Wednesday, like I said, we'll be rounding off uh, the series, If This Things Be In You, and we'll roll it into our communion service. I want to encourage you to be part of this in Jesus' name. We'll continue to pray online as we stay strong this season. 
Join our online prayer meetings 6 to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday and 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. every day. The number to call is 623-349-1909. 623-349-1909. And God will bless you as you join us in Jesus' name. All our previous services are available on our YouTube channel for your view at any time. Please feel free to reach out to us on 602-632-4741 if you have any concern or question. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And continue to please follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter on the handle at solidrophilies.org. And God will bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus. We are aware that the President, President Donald Trump, already gave a marching order for churches to open. Uh, but I would like to let you know that we're going to be methodical about opening our parish. Uh, by the grace of God, a decision has been taken and will communicate to you through, through this week how we are going to reconvene. But one thing is certain, all of us are not going to come back to church the way we left. We're going to tell you how we're going to observe the social distancing. We're going to tell you how we're going to observe the hygiene requirements. We are going to tell you how our online service will continue and how our uh, on-site service will flow into it. Everything will be communicated to you the first day of the church coming back on Sunday. We will announce it. We will let you know. And uh, God will help us as we go through this season in the name of Jesus. We know it's an uncommon season, but uncommon grace follows uncommon season. Uncommon grace will be released unto us in this season. None of us will become a victim of coronavirus. We will not lose anyone. As we come back gradually to the on-site service, we are going to celebrate everyone. We are, going to, we are not going to witness any loss. We are not going to visit anyone in the hospital. The strength of Jehovah will be made perfect in our weakness in the name of Jesus. Continue to be in prayer. Continue to confess what is right. And Jesus will be glorified throughout this season and after in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet and raise your two hands unto heaven as I take the final pastoral benediction. My Father, my God, I thank you for all that you have done today. Thank you, Father, for your children that you have used to be a blessing to us. We give you praise for the word that you, you will release through your daughter today. We thank you, Father, because it will set you in a spirit, man, and our lives will not be the same again. We thank you, Father, for yesterday's food outreach that we had in our church. Thank you for the success. And thank you for the privilege of being a blessing to our community through the distribution of so many items. Father, we give you praise. We will continue to be on the cutting edge of what you are doing in the end time in the name of Jesus. This virus is not going to silence us in the name of Jesus. We will, we will be victorious over every affliction of Satan in the name of Jesus. There shall be no loss. For those that are sick, we will release the healing power of God upon you in the name of Jesus. For all our members and our family that are involved in healthcare service and the front line of this battle against coronavirus we cover you in the blood of jesus we say the arrow of the enemy will not hit you even as you are a blessing to other people in the name of jesus no weapon that is formed against you and your family members shall prosper the grace of god that has been seen us through will continue to see us through we will see the end of may successfully we will see the remaining months of this year successfully in the name of jesus our lives will not be cut short in the name of jesus each and every one of us will fulfill our destiny in the name of Jesus. We appropriate the blood of Jesus. The Bible says the blood of Jesus is the blood of sprinkling that we kept with other things and the blood of healing. We appropriate the power that is in the blood of Jesus upon every member of this church and our loved ones. We shall not die, we shall live. We shall declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. We will continue to be relevant to what God is doing in the end time in the name of Jesus. As we enter a new week, grace will enter with us. Grace will sustain us throughout the week. And at the end of the week, we have every cause to give you praise. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Continue to work strong in the Lord. See you on Wednesday at the communion table in Jesus' name. God bless you.
response to my worship The fragrance of my worship Rose up to the Father Noises, thunders, lightnings Were the response to my worship The fragrance of my worship Rose up to the Father Noises, thunders, earthquakes Were the response to
Fuck! 